Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be working on my 74 Subaru Swap Late Bay. If you saw my last video, you saw that we picked up some Porsche wheels for it. Uh, so today we're going to kind of continue on with that project. I've got those things all refinished and ready to go on the bus, as well as a nice uh, brake upgrade for the front. I've got a full set of uh, Porsche Cayman calipers and rotors ready to go on uh, with the help from Lanner at VW Engineering Canada. So I'm pretty excited to get all this stuff put together. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So here you can see that I've already gotten started. I've got the bus up on jack stands already, got the wheels pulled off of it. I of course, I actually pulled those off earlier in the week. I had to make a run to the tire shop on the way into work one day uh, to get everything switched out to the new wheels. Speaking of the new wheels, here you can kind of see how those turned out. Um, used a local powder coating shop, part and powder coating here in Dallas, uh, refinished these for me. Uh, super nice guys, did a fantastic job on the wheels. Uh, went with a silver color with a powder clear on top. Uh, really made for a nice glossy finish on it. Uh, like I said, really happy with the way those came out. Um, really just sort of exceeded my expectations. So right now I've got some black center caps that I picked up online. Uh, I kind of thought the contrast might be kind of cool against the silver. Wasn't sure how well a silver cap was going to be able to match this. Uh, to be honest, the jury's kind of out on that. I actually have some silver caps on the way. We'll kind of see what wins out in the end, but that's what I've got for right now. As far as tires go, uh, the front wheels are a 17 by 7 wheel, uh, which is the same size as the Fuchs replica that I removed from the bus. So actually the original rear tires on the bus are moved to the front wheels. Those are a 205 50 series tire. Uh, the rear wheels, these wheels being a staggered set from Porsche, are a 17 by 8.5, which is really sort of pushing the limits on what you can get on a bus. Uh, these would have originally come with like a 255-40 on the Porsche, which is just certainly too much tire to get a uh, squeeze into the back. Uh, I was able to go with a 235-45-17. I've already done a little bit of test fitting on the bus. Um, certainly kind of pushing the limits on what you can get under these wheel wells, uh, but it fits right now just barely. But uh, we're going to make it happen. All right, so for all the new parts going on, like I said in my intro, basically what we have here is a uh, Porsche Cayman brake setup. Uh, so that's uh, calipers and rotors from the Cayman. Uh, those rotors are a drilled and vented rotor. It's like 298 millimeter diameter, which is something like uh, 11 and 3 quarter inches. Uh, the calipers are a monoblock uh, four piston caliper. Uh, really nice solid units, much better than kind of the aftermarket stuff you pick up from Willwood. Uh, the next part of the conversion, of course, is these early offset 944 front hubs, which is, of course, how I'm going to get my 51130 bolt pattern. Um, if you know anything about these conversions, you'll know that uh, just with some bearing spacers here, um, you can actually install bus inner and outer bearings and basically bolt those spindles, or excuse me, those hubs right to the spindle. For the rear wheels, we're actually just going to use some adapters for right now. I've got some longer term plans to put some discs on the rear of the bus, uh, but for right now, we're just going to rock the adapters. Of course, I got a new set of ball seat hardware for the wheels. Um, some stainless braided brake lines for the front. And so like I mentioned, Lanner at VW Engineering Canada set me up with all this. He sort of sells the conversion kits. Of course, you can work with him and kind of get various levels of a complete kit. Uh, basically, what I got from him were the modified hubs. I got the bearing spacers and caliper brackets back there that allow me to mount these uh, monoblock calipers up to the spindle. Everything else was pretty well sourced by me. Uh, I went and picked up a set of new calipers for this particular project. Uh, of course, uh, if you can find some off a uh, wreck Porsche or something on eBay, you might be able to save a few bucks there. Uh, tap Rock Auto for rotors and bearings and seals and everything else that I needed. Anyway, pretty excited about getting all this stuff on the bus. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started.
right, so we got everything pulled off. Uh, pretty straightforward process. Uh, usually it's just kind of a trick trying to find the right combination of your wrenches and sockets and everything to be able to get all the bolts out. There's a few obstructions on the back side of this thing with the trailing arms and the rigid brake line, things like that, that can tend to fight you. But all in all, pretty straightforward stuff here, nothing real complicated. So one of the other things that I like to recommend in a situation like this is when you get stuff pulled apart, uh, go ahead and take a visual inspection of everything, kind of see how everything is uh, working for you. Um, I'm basically running a full Wagons West front suspension here. I've got a four inch narrow beam and it's two and a half inch uh, welded drop spindles. I've had all this suspension on this bus now for about two and a half years or so. Uh, fantastic parts. I'd highly recommend hitting up Nate at Wagons West if you're looking to lower your bus. Uh, quality is hard to beat out of his stuff. But uh, basically this is kind of the first time I've torn back into the front of this thing since I put it all together. Uh, so just trying to give it once over, you know, taking a look at the uh, tie rod ends and ball joints, make sure they look tight, nothing out of place. Make sure the boots all look good. Uh, probably going to go ahead and run through everything and uh, grease everything up while I'm at it down here. Uh, but, you know, just good to kind of keep your eyes open. Make sure everything looks like it's uh, on point and no problems. Uh, we're in good shape here, so we're basically ready to start putting all the new parts on. Uh, so let's get rolling. All right, so first step in the process of getting everything on, we'll go ahead and start prepping these hubs up. Got the bearings here ready to go in. Uh, the bearing spacers that I talked about earlier, of course, here just to uh, space out the races. Uh, got my uh, seal and uh, race driver set up here ready. Already figured out what sizes I need to drive those races in. Uh, so it should just be as simple as knocking everything together, uh, greasing the bearings. I'm actually going to try this uh, new tool that I picked up a while back. Uh, this is a Lyle bearing greaser. Um, Always kind of hated packing bearings, thought that might be a pretty little clever tool there to use, uh, make the job a little easier, a little cleaner to work with. Anyway, uh, nothing to do but to do it, uh, so let's get rolling. So we got the first set of races installed. Uh, pretty straightforward process, just making sure you get the spacer uh, back behind the race. Um, really the kind of most difficult thing, which you probably saw, is just getting these races to go in flat. Uh, sometimes they wanted to kind of get uh, go in a little crooked, so I just kind of go back in and punch in the deeper side from the other side, just kind of square it back up again and drive it straight in. Uh, but ultimately, got them in uh, nice and good, so basically ready to go ahead and pack the uh, air bearing for the uh, rear side of the hub and go ahead and get the seal put on. Then we'll pack the front bearing and this, uh, this unit will be ready to go back on the bus and then we'll move on to the next one. So I haven't used this guy before. Uh, like I said, uh, never really cared for packing bearings too much. Um, always kind of a messy job so I'm kind of anxious to try this thing out and see if it works any better. Or if it's just kind of a gimmick. We'll find out. I always like to kind of clean off the bearings and pieces uh, with some brake clean. Uh, these things are usually oiled from the factory uh, just to make sure that they've got some anti-corrosion, anti-rusting properties to them. So let you just kind of clean all that stuff off before you get going. Uh, just to make sure that it's nice and clean. Uh, before we pack it for grease, before we put it in the head.
So you can see the grease comes up through the bearing. Um, pretty neat little trick. Pretty cold in here this morning. The grease is pretty thick, so it takes a pretty good amount of force to get in there. Um, all in all, not bad. Uh, absolutely necessary. Probably not. A little cleaner. Uh, maybe a little bit. One ready to go.
right, so we got everything installed here. Pretty straightforward process uh, with the hubs going straight on. The OD the hub is slightly machined, turned down basically for that uh, Cayman rotor to slip right over. Uh, caliper bolts on pretty easy. Everything loads up uh, from the rear of the caliper, uh, pads and all. Uh, really pretty easy to put together. Um, looks killer. I think it's going to make a big difference. Didn't record the other side. Not quite as much room. It's pretty dark over here. Uh, basically the same process uh, you saw there on the one side that I recorded. So. Anyway, I got these all on, uh, essentially ready to uh, bleed the brakes here, and uh, once that's done, we can throw the wheels on, put it back on the ground, and uh, do a road test. All right, well the brake install is complete. Uh, got everything bled, got a nice uh, solid pedal feel to it. Uh, so now for the part that uh, I know I've been waiting for and I think everyone else is too, uh, let's put these new wheels on and see what it looks like. So it's time to close out the video. As you saw from the pictures, I did get it outside in the driveway after I put the wheels on. Uh, got some nice pictures of it. Got the roof rack and awning put back on it. And then I was able to cruise it down to the uh, the local cruise in here yesterday afternoon. I haven't driven very far. Obviously, as you can see behind me, I've got some things pulled apart again. We've got some stuff that we need to work on. Uh, but all first impressions is the brakes are really good. Nice pedal feel. Certainly haven't had a lot of time on it to get everything bedded in, but I think those are going to be really good brakes. Uh, the first thing that I need to address is the front wheel studs. Those are just a little bit too short. Uh, as soon as I started putting the front wheel on, I realized they were going to be short. I just don't have enough engagement in the lug nuts. Um, okay for a short drive down the road. Certainly not okay to put some distance on it and really put some force in the tires. Um, not a big deal. I've already got some studs on the way. I think these are like 45 millimeters long. Uh, so I'm going to get some longer ones there. Pretty quick change out. Should be no big deal. The back, obviously, got that all pulled apart. Uh, unfortunately, we're getting a little bit of rubbing on those rear tires. Um, like I said before, the eight and a half inch wheel and the 335 section tire is really kind of a lot of meat to stick underneath the fender well. Uh, I don't actually have any problems on the right hand side, it's just the left hand side. I'm getting a little bit of rubbing there on the outer sidewall on the inside of the fender there. So there's a couple ways that we can approach this. You know, I pulled everything apart today. I did a lot of digging into everything, trying to see what my options were. I really got kind of two things I'm considering. 
Uh, first, I looked at the uh, adapter plate here. I pushed the studs out of it. You know, it's possible that I might be able to skim this thing down a little bit just to thin it up, just to pull the wheel in. Uh, this thing overall is about 20 millimeters thick. Um, so it's possible that I might be able to take some material off both sides uh, and get the clearance that I need. Uh, the more likely course of action that I believe I'm going to take here is actually I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, actual wheel hubs um, re-drilled. So I think I'll go visit a local machine shop, get these studs pushed out, and go ahead and re-drill the actual hub for 5 on 130 pattern. And I'll be able to use basically the same studs that were actually in my adapters. Um, and then that'll give me 5 on 130 straight from the drum. Of course, I'll need to drill the drum as well, which should be pretty easy to do. I can actually do that here in the shop with that as a template. Uh, but then if I do that, I'm going to pull the wheel in a full 20 millimeters. Now, obviously, I don't want to go in that far because I'm going to have clearance problems on the inside. Uh, but what I can do then is now really split the difference between that being too thick and not having that 20 millimeters being too thin. And I can run something like a 13 millimeter spacer, uh, basically gain a quarter inch of clearance between uh, the outer sidewall and the fender lip, and I should be clear of all the suspension on the inside. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. Uh, I've got to call a few machine shops, uh, see what I can get done here locally, but that should be a pretty quick fix. All in all, you know, this is part of the process. Uh, when you're doing something different like this, which is a, a big reason why I wanted to run, you know, wheels like this, it's a lot of work, but it's something that you don't see very often, right? So the Fuchs wheels I had on there, you know, you see those on buses pretty routinely. And it's just something that eh, doesn't stand out as much. And I, I really value a lot of having something that's different, something sort of creative. Uh, I really like these wheels a lot. And so, you know, it's a little bit of trouble, especially when you're trying to put such a big one on the back, but I think in the end it'll be worth it. So just part of the process and uh, we'll get there. We just gotta keep pushing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. Hopefully uh, you stuck along because I know it's gonna be pretty long by this point. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe. Um, I'm not a super regular YouTuber by any means, but I've got a lot of projects going here and there and I try to pull the camera out when I can. So uh, there's always more BW content to come. Anyway, we'll see you next time.